Okay. <laughs> well, I'll begin then. Good morning and welcome to the annual general meeting for 2020 of the Society for Academic Freedom and Scholarship. I'm Mark Mercer, the president of SAFS. As I mentioned last night before the Freddy lecture, Zoom works best if you have your camera off and your microphone on mute whenever you are simply watching and listening. Turn them on when you're asking a question or engaging in discussion. During the discussion periods, use the text function to send Robert a message if you have a question or you want to offer a comment. Thanks again to Francis Whittleson and Robert Thomas for being our Zoom masters. They managed what I believe was a glitch-free Freddy lecture yesterday. I want to remind everyone that the sessions are being recorded and will be posted on the internet in a few days. It's a great disappointment to many of us that our annual general meeting this year can't be in person. We invite people to show up for our meetings an hour before the first session in order to renew acquaintances and meet new people and chat about things. I'm sad I'm not greeting in person Lisa and Bruce, Catherine and William, Carmen, Selim and Susan and Ed and Phil and Randy and Bill. Hines, of course. And it's always great to anticipate Ava's incisive take no prisoners questioning of the speakers. It's always good to see Dave, Henry, Kate, Grant, Kathy, and on and on. We like getting together in person so much that ours might have been the last academic group to throw in the towel and transfer online this season. We waited until almost it was clear restrictions wouldn't be lifted to change our plans for an in-person meeting. Well, maybe we can get together again and in person next year. Of course, uh, compared to all the pain, hardship and stress so many people these days are suffering, our disappointment having to meet by Zoom only isn't that much. Let me say a little bit about what SAFS has been up to the last year before introducing Joanne and beginning the sessions. The Society for Academic Freedom and Scholarship is a society of mainly Canadian academics who support freedom of ac uh, academic freedom in research, the free and open dissemination of research, academic freedom in teaching, academic freedom in learning, and academic freedom in service at Canadian universities and universities throughout the world. We support freedom of expression on campus, the merit principle in university decisions, uh, that is, that academic decisions not be made using non-academic criteria, and we support due process and natural justice in university um, procedures of discipline or sanction. We are keen to secure the conditions for and to promote academic excellence. We publish three newsletters a year, sponsor events on SAS themes, and write letters to university people when we think that something has gone wrong. SAS is having an active 2019-2020. Among the 10 events we've organized or co-sponsored or otherwise been involved with this year, let me just mention five. In October, SAFS co-sponsored Freedom of Debate in the University, Confronting Contemporary Challenges, a panel discussion at Concordia University in Montreal. This discussion was partly in response to the Liberal Arts College's rescinding of an invitation it had made to the political scientist Harvey Mansfield. Liberal Arts College, as you might know, is a great books program at Concordia, founded in 1978 by academics who went on to help found SAS. Dr. Mansfield was disinvited when some students and faculty members objected to what they take to be his views about women or feminism. In November, SAS participated in Should the Chicago Principles Be Affirmed at Alberta Universities, a panel discussion at Mount Royal University in Calgary. The Chicago principles express a commitment to freedom of expression on campus, but they're often criticized as contrary to civility or respect for students. If you, will, if you were there, you will remember that the discussion was a three-hour marathon that left no stone unturned. In January, SAF sponsored Christina Bainey's talk, Suppressed Ideas Aren't Going Away. In February, SAFS participated in deplatforming the morality of restricting speech, speech at universities. Uh, this event featured two speakers, each had an hour, uh, talk for 30 minutes, then a question period for 30 minutes. One of the speakers argued that universities have an obligation to keep certain speakers and views off the podium as part of quality control. 
The other speaker, and that was me, argued that universities have an obligation not to interfere with the free and open exchange of ideas. More recently, just last week, SAFs organized a Zoom meeting on the topic self-censorship. How does it affect Canadian universities? Five SAFs members looked at the topic from different angles and engaged in discussion with a Zoom audience. SAFs has sent this year to date 11 letters to university administrators and others. That's uh, slightly above our average of uh, 7 to 8 a year. You might be aware, uh, we're thinking of, uh, the board is right now considering a, a 12th letter or perhaps a, a, a 12th set of letters. Uh, you might be aware that university deans and university presidents in Canada are issuing public statements on events following the killing of George Floyd. While much in these statements um, might be important to say, the deans and presidents are often making claims about society or politics that are controversial. And they are, the deans and the, and the presidents, that is, are presenting themselves as speaking for their faculties or their universities. Since the university as an institution is to house controversy and dispute, a university that has an official line puts freedom of thought and open inquiry at risk. Our most recent letter, uh, just posted on our website uh, last night, uh, was to the University of Alberta, where a dean had dismissed a professor from her position as an academic uh, counselor to students on the grounds that some students do not like some of the professor's views. Other letters we've written this year have concerned restricted hirings, the use of security fees to prevent groups from holding events, and the imposition of penalties on professors who take politically incorrect positions. Uh, perhaps the uh, most egregious case was Mark Hecht at uh, Mount Royal. Um, that's what we've been up to um, in the uh, last uh, 10 months. Uh, today, we have three sessions um, followed by the uh, business meeting. In about an hour, we'll hear from Francis Whittleson and Steve Parrott. After lunch, Samir Gandesha will give this year's keynote address. 